Guess who's back? Another Sunday. Hope everybody enjoyed their weekend thus far. I want to give a shout out to the Washington Capitals. Wow. Even though I'm not a hockey fan, like people, anytime I talk to people around and about in these streets, I always say I'm a I'm a DC fan. I love the, the Washington Wizards. I love the Nats. I love the Redskins and I love the Caps. So hey, I'm honored to be a part of a winning team. I also want to give a shout out to our homegrown brother Kevin Durant from those Dynamite Golden State Warriors. Um, people often talk about LeBron, they talk about Mike, they talk about Kobe and everybody else, but you do not hear them talking about KD. They can sleep on KD all they want to because <laughs> we ain't talking five years from now, we ain't talking ten years from now. We talking KD is making a statement where he has actually made a statement from day one since he's been in the league. A humble player. Seven footer can handle the rock like like anybody out here, man. It's a phenomenal dude, and I want to um, give congrats to Katie and his family. But I can't leave on my man LeBron. I just can't. Mind you, that all the research I've done on LeBron James have been nothing but positive research. It's from him getting you know countless scholarships to kids, how you know great of a family man he is, and how often how he stays humble so much, and even his court presence is. Just like none other, man. He, he the, the guy gets no bad press, nothing. I mean, no bad press. So I definitely want to commend him on his walk. And um, also congratulate um, Cleveland. You know, it's not easy to, to make it to the championship. You can call the, the league the East Week. You can, you know, LeBron can't do it by itself. You can, it's, it's whatever. You can say what you want. But at the end of the day, the guy's still doing phenomenal things. And also, you, you guys know how I start my show off. Okay, I'll be remiss if I didn't thank God Almighty for giving me the opportunity. Thank my mom and dad for giving me the, the guidance over the years. Thank everybody that has helped me, has cultivated me, from my family members to my friends, to the kids I mentor. <clears throat> Just everybody I come in contact, man, in, in my everyday, to my MPD family, my band members, you know, the list go on and on and on. But um, I do want to thank you guys for tuning in each and every Sunday to support my show. Today I got a, a good friend of mine. is a, a young man that I truly admire. I don't, we all know, having a radio show, you have the options of inviting whoever you want to have on your show. And I like to bring people on my show that's going to be informative, that's going to help the masses, and that's going to, you know, give out some good information. And in the studio today, I have my man, brother, Dr. William Flip Clay. Say good morning or good evening. I'm so used to being on the morning show. <laughs> I'm still I'm on still the morning Good afternoon, side. good evening. All that, man. Good afternoon, good evening, family. Thank you, thank you for joining me, man. I mean, I'm glad to be here, man. I, I, here. I truly appreciate it. That's, man, I, he's one of them cats, man, that I, I'm like a, I don't want to call it a Facebook stalker, but... Growing up in life, you have to learn from others in order for yourself to be able to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. And I do want to say that I'm honored to call you a friend, and, um, and I like the work that you do, and I like your tenacity and your consistency in your walk. Tell my listeners, man, a little bit about yourself. Oh, my name is Dr. William Flip Clay. I'm, I've been a licensed school counselor for about 17 years. Um, been on the national circuit speaking for about 10 years. I'm featured on the Steve Harper Morning Show, WHUR 96.3. Been on Fox 5 News twice. Been on the Washington Post twice. In 2012, I received the Mark and Foster Distinguished Educator of the Year Award. Um, last year, in 2017, I opened up for Judge Hatchett with the My Brothers Keepers Program in Charlotte, okay. North Carolina. And yes, in 2010, um, I was recognized 
by United States Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor is an extraordinary role model and individual. But I think the most important aspect I, I want to share with the audience is my personal journey growing up and the trauma I went through and the tribulation and how it made me a better person today. And that leads us to, you have a, a new book that's coming out, right? Is that the um, the diary of the constipated black man? The the, the diary of an emotionally constipated. Okay, okay. Not not black man, but man. Man, and, hey, my man. There my man, go. my man. My man. Okay. Yeah, because you know the we the everyday the everyday man. Yeah, we constipated. <laughs> hey, speak speak to so just for you guys. Just if it ever if it gets backed up in here, we prepared. Just so y'all know, just want my listeners to know, we, we prepared. Let's speak to let's let's speak about that, my friend, brother, Doctor Phil. What's what's your impression, or what does this even derive from? I mean, ex looking at my personal and professional career mm -hmm. and everything I went through growing up as a child, um, but I think it really derived from my pr professional career, working with young males from the ages of five all the way up to eighteen. Okay. I've started noticing things and seeing things, and I was like, wow, what's really going on with our young men? Mm -hmm. and, and then I was just like, wow. And I was like, wow, they, they're really, I mean, you know, we're, we're, I really couldn't, put, have, I couldn't put, put, put a name on it. Right. But after just seeing the trauma, molestation, incest, rape, um, the lack of the father in the house of a lot of our young men, mm -hmm. you start seeing, um, they start exhibiting behaviors. Yes. So this book is probably a derivative of this everything I went through personally and professionally. I also see. So we, we're going to we're going to actually the show can actually the show in the book can be dissected through this show. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go down on a couple of the chapters in the book. We have emotional and psychological incarceration. You have to reveal to heal. That's powerful. The day one divorced religion. Man down, father gone. Emotional detoxification, love, lies, and emotions, secrets make you sick. That's powerful in itself. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna go right there. The day I, okay. That, now we this man, this public radio man, you ain't gotta hide it, man. I, <laughs> hey, look, he corrected me on something. This is the Archie Bezler radio show, y'all. Hey, I'm straight southeast war. <laughs> hey, correct me, Slim, for real. The day I divorced. The day, okay. The day I divorced religion. My man. My man. The, the day, look, I said one. That, that's that flashback I had from my teacher back at Patterson Elementary <laughs> School when, when she did the Roman numeral, the I, and it was a one. I didn't know it was an I or a one. But it, so let's let's. I, I want to go right to that one because to me it's powerful. You know, some things touch your heart. He says, secrets make you sick. Dr. Yeah. Phil, we're going right to that, Dr. Phil. Well, what, secrets make you sick. Let's, let's, let's please speak on it. The title speak for itself. <laughs> I know, we live how, many, how many people listen to the show right now tonight, seriously, all jokes aside, when we talk about secrets make you sick? Yeah. Hey, we're we, we going to need y'all to call in tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, yeah four, five, zero, I'm sorry, 800-450-7876. 800-450-7876. So I'm going to speak directly to this to this, this one particular topic. And we have so many to cover. Secrets make you sick. A lot of, I'm not, I'm not even going to say men, but a lot of people in general, Doc, they, they don't want to expose the truth, which in a lot of cases is a secret. Right. Not realizing that you're, ca you're causing more harm than good. Correct. Because you're not acting. Now, secrets are not, we're not talking about your innermost dark secrets. Secrets can be when you cover up something and now you're telling a lie. Right. So in order, in order to tell a lie, you're covering up a secret. Correct. Correct. So we, Correct. we, need, to, we need to teach our people how to, I want to say, well, be forthcoming with their dialogue or, or just speak the truth. You have to share. Because, I mean, I mean, when you think about a secret, everyone listening to this show today, my two hundred thousand listeners, yeah. I don't, you know, I ain't bragging, but go ahead. It's two hundred thousand yeah. plus, plus. Come here. How many of you are really holding on to a secret, and you know deep down inside, if you release this secret, it will free you. So we have to understand. We see. We make. I think we make. We make this complicated. It's right. very simple. We don't have to make this complicated. You know, write down your secret, and you need to share. It. Yeah, share your secret, even if you turn it into a game. Call it. Um, secrets charades or something because and from a serious standpoint and the reason why we jump straight to this because secrets causes our kids 
will um, have um, negative behavioral problems, um, cause our kids to get locked up, cause our kids to do bad in school. Um, it sets our kids up for these predators and because we've been damaged and destroyed ourselves, but we're so we don't want to tell our kids the things that we went through Correct. to protect them from going through the same, same things. Thing. To me, that type of secret can really hurt you. And, and, you. and from the from a counselor standpoint, working in the public school and the private sector, the, the youth and the children, they, they need you to be transparent. Yes, sir. Because see, when you're faking, when you're faking it, your kids know. So when you really just think about the secrets that make you sick, because most of us have more than one. And from and Dr. Flip, from the adult, from the even the adult position, the world is predicated on a whole bunch of secrets. And the, the sad part about it is, so there, so me being in my profession, so I had to, be, you know, you know, you have people that sign confidentiality letters and all that type of thing. Correct. That's a different type of secrecy. Right. 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 <laughs> that's, know, different. That's, that's, that's different. That's different. That's that's like an NDA non disclosure agreement. <laughs> you, know, you don't talk about it. You know, some things you don't talk about. <laughs> But the secrets that a lot of us are, we're, we're, we're missing out on saving our marriages, saving oh, our that's, families. Oh, that's a major one. That's a major. That's major. You, you feel me? Because when the husband and wife have secrets, but you guys are supposed to be the best of friends, but that one thing that you're holding near and dear to yourselves can actually be the one thing that can save your, your marriage because if you come correct with your spouse and be truthful, and they'll, that, see and they'll realize how much you really love them. Most definitely, because we all recover, we all bounce back. But even you agree, even, Nick? Okay. Even in a relationship, if you're in a relationship with another individual, right? I mean, it's important that you're, you're transparent, and, and it it won't feel good because right. a secret that's making you sick is going to you're going to feel uncomfortable. Right. Nothing worth nothing worth having supposed to be easy anyway. No. I I had this conversation um, with people I come in contact with. We we applaud the the marriages that last for forty and fifty years. And and I'll say it, you know, the women on those long marriages, they go through a lot. Yes. You know, some of them dissect their mate. Um, some of the mates, you know, they get intoxicated. They come home and tell the wife everything. Right. But at the end of the day, if your partner is your partner, they're going to give you a pass. And a pass don't mean you take it for granted. They're going to take advantage. Right. Just be straight up and be truthful in your relationships, in your families, at work, because we are... We're going against the grain, man, with all these secrets because the secrets compound something else. You holding a secret, that's going to deal with you emotionally, and then you're going to take that out on somebody else. Most definitely. And, and, I mean, just, just, just I mean, it, it, it's, it's simple, but it's not complicated. Right. We make it, and women are so unique that they know when you trifle. Yeah. But when you're keeping a secret, a woman knows you're keeping a secret. So, fellas, if you listen to this show tonight and you holding on to that secret, I'm not saying tomorrow wake up and you just, you know, you have to go within yourself to say, you know what, I'm going to share this with my spouse. Share something. Share something that's really been hindering you and holding you from becoming a man. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's what, and so when I, when I was writing this book, I said, you know, I want to have title that's going to grab people's attention or start the conversation. Because, mm -hmm. see, this book is about starting the conversation. The topic, so your, that title... That title, I want it, Secrets Make You Sick. Give us a little bit of insight in that chapter. What can people expect from that chapter of your book? Um, personal stories of myself that I've never talked about before. There are secrets. We, we, we want to wait till the book come out? Or yeah, you yeah, have to wait. I mean, I, am, I mean, you know, you, you know, when you meet a woman, and, and you have to put a ring on her <laughs> finger before be she said, that. I do. Amen. So you, well, you, want, you need to purchase the book. <laughs> Before you find out what's, what's what's the chapter all about, I mean, you know. I got I got Doctor Doctor <laughs> in the studio. Hey, give us a call 800-450-7876. 800-450-7876. For you guys that know Coach Archie, I like for my callers to call in because at the end of the day, this is about saving someone's life, saving someone's marriage, saving someone's child, but most importantly, saving someone's family. And in the eyes of God, we all try. We need to do as best as we can in the honor of that man above us, so that we can all somehow have a productive life. And it doesn't take much, um, a kind word, or even getting Doctor Flip's book. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna go down. To, let me, let me touch on something else, Doctor Flip. Knock yourself out. This right here. Uh oh. The laxative. <laughs> 
I'm just telling y'all, there's, there's, there's a chapters in this book. You, you, go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Flip. The laxative. What is the purpose of a laxative? The clean, um, my thing is the 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 cleanse y'all to give you peace of mind. Okay, so in, in in that particular chapter, I'm sharing strategies you can use. Okay. To free your emotional constipation. Okay. So 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 real strategies you can actually use and say I can really do this. Okay. I, I need to do this. I have to do it. You must do it. You must do it. If you read this book and you don't, if you read this book and this book does not change you, if it doesn't even trigger the conversation. If it doesn't start you on a track to healing, mm -hmm. then we, you, it, it, it's going to do what it, this book is going to do what it needs. It's going to start the conversation. It, 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 if you read this book and you don't have the conversation with another significant other, gotcha. then you can't hear or you can't speak or you can't talk or something. Well, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm get the book as soon as they're printed and I'm going to have you come back on the show because by me being an author myself, I, I get... People don't realize the first of all the, everything that we put into the book. Like like Doctor Flip is saying now, this book is what is coming from his heart, the emotional standpoint of it. Somebody want to? want to know the number? Oh, so the number is four five zero eight hundred four five zero seven eight seven six eight hundred four five zero seven eight seven six. We about to take a break in a couple of seconds, and we gonna we got a couple of callers on the line. The, the phone lines are starting to blow up, and we also we we got a giveaway to give away today too. Um, Doctor Flip is having um. Let's speak on that before we go to the break. Dr. Um, Flip. July the seventh. Um, oh, what's the, book signing presentation uh -huh. right here in um, up Largo, Maryland, the Mer fourteen fifty Mercantile Lane. Okay. Um, yeah, and we're gonna we and we we're gonna share it even more. Yeah, um, we're gonna get into we, it. We're gonna yes, get into it. We'll get into it. We'll but we're gonna be offering um, um, free tickets, maybe a ticket or two on property. And a discount. And a, and a discount. discount. We offer a discount just for your listeners. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, discount right. code. Because yeah, we gotta eat. We gotta eat. Yeah, we yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah, we, we trying to get the new Jordans too when they come. Uh, I, the Jordan. Yeah, Man. I mean, the Stan Smiths or something. We trying to get something. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we, when we come back, we are gonna come back from the from the break, and uh, we're gonna really get into this because. Mind you, we're, we're making fun of it to start the show out. By the time we transition into the show, the topic is going to get very serious. We're just trying to warm you guys up to realize the importance of what we're talking about. You're listening to WL 95.9 FM, 1450 AM, DCnews.com, where information is powered. This is the Archie Bezel Radio Show. Let's figure it out. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, and we'll be right back with Dr. Flip. So, you're still alive, right? What's up, Christopher, Kenny, Deshaun, Let me see what Brother Cecil talk about. Cecil, what you talking about, Cecil? Everyone has a past. That's why it's called a past. Now, if it has to do with putting someone else's life in jeopardy, then by all means, share. But others then keep that past in the past. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I, I see where you're going with it. We, so by no means are we saying that we're trying to have people just say things to insult anyone or to make anyone feel bad, but right. but oftentimes, um, brother Cecil, a lot of people hold a lot of things in, and to you, you may think that the secret is very harmful, but at the end of the day, you have to give the person the benefit of the doubt. No, right, and you have to make that decision. You you know, um, if it comes to life or death of an individual, if you feel like the information might right. cause someone mm -hmm. someone to be hurt, then you know you have to say to yourself. This but it's, it's really point. more about you, Cecil. Okay. Is this really pertaining to you? To what degree? How will you feel once you release this right. particular secret? And that's the thing. And so, and once again, that's a worldly word. Secret is a worldly word. I don't, so I'm going to take a shot at at, at, cha at changing the word. Okay. We ain't going to call it secret. Okay. We're going to call it hesitancy. Hesitancy? Okay. I'm, I'm hesitant. And we're about to come back. Well, we're about to come back. We're about to go live. Archie Bezlo got a radio show. <laughs> All right, so we back. We back on the air. So we gonna we gonna go straight to the phone line. Hello, you listen to the Archie Bezel Radio Show. Let's figure it out. Have my man Ben on the line. Yeah, how you doing, bro? How you doing? Good evening, sir. Good man. Hey, uh, hello to your guests too. Uh, got a question? Uh, you know, you mentioned something about uh, uh, I want you to if you could expand expand on uh, what you meant by um, divorce and religion. So basically, my point: a lot of people speak religion. Oh, you're talking about, I'm sorry, you're talking about the title of the book. Right, title of the chapter. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, talk, go ahead, speak to that. Speak to that, Dr. Flip. You want, in reference to what, what that the, chapter the, entails? 
You talking about the day the, 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 the day the I divorced religion? Yeah. Go ahead, speak though. Uh, well, in chapter three, um, the title of the chapter, the day I divorced religion, I talk about my personal experience growing up, being involved in the church growing up, even into adulthood, and really examining the condition of our people from a spiritual standpoint, and not only from a spiritual, but more from a mental health standpoint. And I just felt like some of the things that I experienced growing up in the church, and currently even today, made me really self-reflect and look at um, and examine us as a people and the condition of our people, and looking at the institution from when I was growing up to looking at the institution now, and it really caused me to self-reflect and share some of my tri trials and tribulations, because that's one of the topics that's kind of tough to talk about within the um, African American community is mental health and religion. So in chapter four, I talk about three or four different stories that personally affected me and it made me self-reflect and take a good deep look at the institution as a whole and how, how I felt like the church wasn't doing its part to help our people. So there's some personal stories in that chapter that I went through as a personal, as an individual, and as a professional that caused me to write this chapter and to write, to write this chapter the day I divorced religion, is to take a step back and self-reflect. Because see, self-reflection is good in anything. And when and looking at it from a counselor standpoint, a mental health professional, we we can just look at our people and say, there's something wrong. So that's how that's how I came up with that title. That's why I wrote that title. So when you read chapter four, you will see firsthand stories. Personally and professionally, and why I wrote that title. Why well, I came up with that title, I'm sorry, not wrote that title. Appreciate it. My man, thanks a lot. Did that um, clarify your, the question, yeah, sir? I Outstanding. Thank you for calling in. Right. Yes, sir. So, again, the number is 800 450 7876. 800 450 7876. Like I tell my listeners all the time, the purpose of news talk shows or radio talk shows is for people to actually call in. To even if you don't heal and help yourself, your questions can heal, or even your debates. Like the brother that just called in, I'm quite sure he he wanted clarity, and, and right. I'm quite sure a lot of people wanted clarity. And um, it gives my guests, such as Dr. Flip, a chance to clarify the purpose or the meaning of our whatever statements or topics that we speak on. Good. So right. we were talking about what were we, we were talking about. Which one we were talking about? Because this book, man, this is going to be a great book. We were talking about um, secrets make you sick. So we let's let's we gonna I'm a I'm a I'm a transition from that one because all because what we gonna wind up doing with that one is we are gonna be talking about that whole chapter in the book and, and, we, and we don't want to do that no no we no, we, we want we, to we want to spread the love let, let me let me let me jump to this man down father gone <laughs> that man. in that in itself that you you could have put just four words on that <laughs> in that chapter <laughs> man down father gone um again when you read this book you talk you're gonna be you're going to hear my personal and professional factual stories. So it's not like the stuff that's being made up. Um, I talk about the nights I laid in my bed growing up in tears because my father wasn't in my life. Okay. And, and questioning the fact, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. And why was my father act, I'm acting this way toward myself? And why did my father put on this persona? Like, everything was normal and everything was okay. And so, when I was writing this chapter, it, it, it really hit home for me. Um, just looking at how we respond to our fathers who are active in our life and who are not active in our life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's also healing in the particular chapter because it, in the, at the end of the chapter, I talked about right before my father passed that we were able to reconnect, okay. per se. Okay. But I, I go deep into those nights when I was laid in bed crying. Mm -hmm. I, I talk about the days when I would speak to my father on Thursday, and he would say, I'm going to pick you up on Friday. Mm -hmm. And he didn't show up. And I'm sitting on the porch with my bags packed I already know where you're going and my to clothes yeah. waiting for him to pick pick me up, and he would never pick me up. Or So, man down, father gone. I'm saying, man down, father gone. Man. My father was present. Yeah. Was, was, was his presence wasn't there, and he tried to. 
he, he thought his presence would would help me, but that's not what I wanted. So man, damn, father, on it basically, you know. And then I'm talking about it from my pers- professional experience working with these young boys. Yeah. And just, how they respond to their father. You just choked me up right there. I, I elaborate. Go ahead. So, ahead. so you're looking at it from you're getting it from my personal experience. Then I'm then I'm sharing cases of young men I've worked with, yeah. and, and how they are hurting right now. As I as I, if I as I as we talk on this show, there's someone listening to this yeah, Facebook live who's sitting there thinking, "Wow, he's talking about me," and that, a, and that could be the secret. I'm gonna tell you right now publicly. You just gave me, a, and we'll talk offline. I'm gonna write a whole book about. That. I mean, we'll talk offline because, once again, you you and I both know that God put things on our heart to counterpart us to doing certain things. Correct. I think, and even if you and I collaborate on it, you know, and I and people know me on my show, I go off, I'm, I'm an emotional dude, man. It's, right. <laughs> it's, it's all about, it. but what you just said, man, and honestly, when you was talking, I played that scenario in my head. Now, mind, mind you, I've heard it thousands of times. Right. From the kids I mentor, how dad said that he's coming and he don't show up, how mom keep giving excuses to the kid, why he's not showing up. And that thing really hit my heart because you said man down. And man down is the young man down or the young woman down that keep those high hopes of thinking that dad is going to show up. Right, right, right. That is so detrimental, not only to the child psyche, but to that adult or that guardian or that teacher or that coach or that friend, people don't know the cause and effects that one decision, one lazy, irresponsible decision, how it can affect an entire population of people. We're talking about generations. Generations, Slim. We're we talking about generations of people. Man, let me, let's, let's, man, I'm about to go up. Give, nigga, who we got? Caller, we got call line, we got Cecil. Y'all give me, I'm about to get choked up in this time. Call it. Who got it on the line? Brother Cece, you on the line? Who we have on the line? We can go ahead, Cecil. You ready? Brother Cecil? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, buddy. You on, you on the Archie Bezler radio show, man. What's going on with you, buddy? All right. How you doing there, Coach? I'm doing good, my friend. Hey, um, I just wanted to, um, to make a couple of points. And my first point was... Um, I can't comment about fatherless because my father was always in the house all the way up until I was age 18. So um, that one I can't speak on because I don't know anything about. But the main thing that I was calling about was on the, the statement that you made about secrets. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily agree with, like I, I posted before. Okay. If it's in the past, let it pass. Unless it's something that's going to affect the person that I'm with, if it's going to affect their life going forward, then by all means. Mm-hmm. Then my whole question is, what's the sense of having a past? And we all have one, and that's why we call it the past. Right. So so I'm going to clear it up from my end, um, um, Brother Cecil, and I'm going to let Dr. Mm-hmm. Flip clear it up. So my... When I'm coming from, I'm coming from a place of current secrets. I'm not. I'm not coming from a place of past secrets. Me myself, I'm, I'm coming from a place. If something happens, whether it be your mom, your spouse, your child, and you know that that secret that's been held is going to really affect them one way or the other. So my thing is, it's best to get it out early, opposed to cause that effect down the road, because that's how we get. Well, it's a whole bunch of things that transform from that man, from the mental health part of it to, you know, bullying to abuse. Um, you, you see where I'm going with it, Cecil? And, and so I'm not saying that what you're saying is wrong and I'm not saying what I'm saying is so much right. But I'm just saying I'm coming from the current and the present um, point of the whole secret part. And Dr. Flip, you can speak to where you're coming from. With it. And Cecil, um, I, I understand what you're saying, Cecil. And I'm looking at it again from uh, I'm going to switch over now to my professional mental health experiences. Um, when I see young boys and young men walk into my office, and even on the private sector, when I'm working on them with them one-on-one, and they're 13 years, 14, they're 14 and 13, 13 and 14 years of age, and they're sharing with me something they've never shared in their life, that means they have been holding this in for 13 or 14 years. And it's been impacting them and affecting them on their emotional, social, and academic well-being. 
So with that being said, if, if I have children 13, if the children are 13 to 14 years of age and they're sharing this with me, thinking about, think about the individuals who, don't, who have not found the person they feel comfortable to open up and trust, and now they are adults. And they're still holding on to that secret they know is impacting them and affecting them in a way that won't, won't help them to be successful. So the, when, you, when, when I say that, that's why I decided to write that title, because write that chapter, because again, eight years of, four, over 17 years, you hear stories after stories after stories of young men and young girls who are holding on to that one secret and they go into adulthood with that one secret, and then it's hard for them to stay in a, in a good relationship. Is sometimes it hinders them from operating professionally. So there's a lot of variables that play into um, that particular title. Did, did that help you, um, Brother Cecil? Because like I said, we 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 we're, we're pretty much all three saying the same thing, and I, I get what I we definitely get what you're saying, Cecil, because we spoke about that once we went off air. Yeah, I understand, and and I'm not gonna tie the show up with because we could probably go on and on. Yes, sir. I do appreciate the, the, the feedback and getting the chance to speak with you both. Um, done in my show. Uh, Th brother Arch, thanks, man. And, no, thank you for calling in, too. Thanks, bro. Okay. And, and, and see, call, call me tomorrow, sis. We can, we can talk. You know how me and you do. <laughs> we can talk about it tomorrow. All right, bro. I love you, man. Love you, too. Outstanding. Uh, We're going to go to call. We got Rob from Ohio. Again, the number is four five. The number is four five zero eight hundred four five zero seven eight seven six eight hundred four five zero seven eight seven six. We have Rob on the line. Hey, how you doing, man? Actually, I'm not from Ohio. I'm actually coming driving back to the D.C. area. Okay. <laughs> what's up, Rob? What's up? What's up, Bob? What's up, Blue? Uh, hey, man. Uh, I want to congratulate you, man. Once again, you hit the nail on the head. I'm telling you, I believe that this doctor's second book. Yes, outstanding. Yeah. The second one, and I mean, and he, me, we have talked extensively. Um, you know, and I, I just really, I, I, and it, that's near and dear to my heart. You know, we, we as a black community got to get in that chair and that couch. Yep. It, 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 it's mission critical, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of, you know, it's, and, and, and you guys both know it's been taboo in our culture that I'm not going to talk to nobody. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not crazy, quote unquote. But you crazy if you don't. Hey, come on, man. preach, brother. Because my running joke is, if Tony Soprano had a, a therapist, why can't you? That's fact. Mm. Yeah. You know what mm. I mean, I mean this, this this cat, his whole life, and you see what happened when, when he was exposed to the murders with his father, where he had the bad anxiety attack. Right. To the point where he, he almost gave his life up because they thought he was going to snitch, but he just wanted to get help. That's right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... And I tell people when I was going to therapy, man, let me tell you something. People are fair, they fear the unknown. And I'm going to tell you the God's are truth. What you don't realize is, is that once you sit down, that hour, two hours go by so fast. That can go through your head, man. You know the right case to me. You be like, it's over already. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to encourage, uh, you know, the African-American community who's listening. You know, man, it's not what you think it is. You're not soft and weak because you go to therapy. You know, uh, 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 my frat brother, please, I go to the same church. We, you know, I've had people promote that. Uh, brothers hugging hug brothers. You keep getting that brother, like, give me the forearm shiver. Right. And after you kept under that, that piece of the brothers begin to soften up. It's the same thing as therapy. That's yes. therapy right there. My man. So, Dr. I can see the way you're saying, you know, the same thing I'm saying, you know, the oh, whole oh, oh. Keep going, man. Hey, you, you, you two up on me. I'm, I'm trying to get my, my book out, but uh, you two up on me, man. So keep going, bro. No, man, I, mean, I, I, I appreciate that when Rob caught it. And I'm glad, again, um, when we talk about males and mental health or males and therapy, it's, it's a subject that we don't talk about. But I, I want to commend Rob for saying, you know what? I'm in therapy. I'm making it happen, and it's helping me. So, and again, when I, went, when I decided to write this book, again, I want to start the conversation. And, and, and move on to the road, you know, to the, for, for healing for a lot of people. Call in. The number is 1-800-450-7876. Call in. Call in. Come come talk to me. You know, I'm, I'm sure you heard of Dr. Phil. Well, I'm, the, I'm the chocolate Dr. Phil, Dr. Flip. So, hey, hey, brother Rob, we want you to have a safe safe travels, man, making it back home, champ. Okay, thank you, man. My man, thank you for calling in, man. All right. Outstanding. 
We, we got another call on the, on the line. Ms. Yolanda, you on the air? Yes, I am. How are you guys doing? Good evening. We're What's doing up, great. Yolanda? Thank you for calling the Archie Bezzo Radio Show. Absolutely. This is a great topic. This is a very, very great topic. Thank you guys for, for putting it out there. Yes, ma'am. I know with me, the whole topic with um, secrets, I know in childhood, especially in our culture, um, we're taught to keep those secrets. So, you know, to be strong and, and, and overcome. I know for me, coming up um, from a childhood, and especially from a spiritual background and a family of a lot of male ministry, ministers, those secrets went to the altar. Mm. Those secrets, you take them to the altar, you cry, you shed your tears, you shout, you pray, and, and but the secrets are there. You keep those secrets there. Mm. And um, as I got older, those secrets started, started to hinder my development um, within myself. My professional career was great. I looked like I was functioning. Everything was good, but I had those secrets. I grew up in a household with an alcoholic, schizophrenic father. He never gave up on his five daughters. Um, went through a death of my mother at the age of 16, who was the entire family rock. Yes, ma'am. It was, again, taken to the altar. Wow. Don't get me wrong, I'm very, very spiritually grounded, but it took me 30 years later, 30 years later, to finally take what I was taking to the altar and actually accept it. Yes, ma'am. And I it. And mm. I did that by seeking therapy. And Yolanda, I, I, first of all, I want to say thank you for sharing your story. Um, and thank you for understanding the importance of taking that step to step out of the comfort zone of thinking just taking it to the altar was going to solve your problem. Right. And also the whole therapy piece, man, but I, I, I definitely wanted to, to commend you because um, therapy is one thing. And, you know, men and women going to doctors and getting themselves checked out. At the end of the day, it's about saving oneself. You have to save yourself first, and you shouldn't be ashamed of therapy. And there are a lot of people that do hinder us from actually seeking therapy, seeking wisdom, going to our doctor's appointment. And I'm 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 sorry to say that we don't we're not to me we're not doing enough to support one another on a consistent basis. If you see someone going through something in your family, we everybody knows someone that can help someone, and it's almost you, you know what I mean? and it's almost selfish to not step up and say, hey, look, we ain't got to talk about it, but let me let me take you right. to see someone. Uh, or let, me give you a resource. let me give you a resource. resource. Or do you need me to rob you somewhere? Right, it's something right. on your heart. Right. Have you thought about therapy? Have you thought about going to church and having a confession? Have you thought about just going to hear my pastor preach? You know, have you thought about sitting down reading a, a Bible scripture with me? There, there are so many things, and, and like Dr. Flip says, man, I, I want to commend you for sharing your story and your testimony because a lot of people we, we're hurting ourselves by keeping the secret. By keeping the secret, and that's why I, the title "Secrets Make You Sick." Come on, man. Because now here, here you go. Here we have Yolanda that just called in and said and stated, "I, I, I was going to the church and they was praying and that out but I was still holding on to this secret, and this secret was making her sick." Right. So when she released that, go ahead, Yolanda. Go ahead, ma'am. It made me so sick mm. to where holding it so far inside, it made me so sick to where I became an addict. Yes, ma'am. I became, I started to numb it through substance abuse. Mm. Yes, ma'am. You know, numbing that sickness, and that's not the right way to do it. I had to, I had to face that, I had to face that sickness. I had to talk it, I had to share it, I had to teach it, I had to explain it. Wow. I had to get that sickness out. And... Well, the grace of God. Now, I'm going to say, going to that altar was my base. Yes, ma'am. Right, right. That was definitely my base, but I had to go full circle and go back to the base. Yes, ma'am. I, I had to take it full circle. And and glad to say, three years substance free. Outstanding. I go back and I teach that sickness. I teach people, talk about it, exactly what you're saying. I go back. To meetings, and I explain to people. I take people to meetings to substance abuse, whether it's A A N A, whatever it is that you do, whatever you do that numb it, 
is not gonna work until you share your secret. You got to share your testimony, yes, ma'am. You got to share it, and that's exactly what it is. It becomes no longer a secret; it becomes a testimony. A testimony. So you just can't stop talking about it. And and and, and but go ahead, go ahead. So, but and ma'am, that's wow. That's that's why I love this platform because. You don't know how many people with just what you've said in this three to five minutes of your time that, that put a light bulb on somebody, turn a light bulb on somebody's mind. Because why are we holding on to things? We we we, we, we have to teach our, our loved ones to not hold on to something. There's And there's another thing, too. There is someone in your family. There is a friend that you can confide in. And even if you start the conversation, I'll say, hey, look. I'm coming to you with this right. because this is near and dear to my heart and I have never shared this with anyone else. Can you promise me that this will stay with us? Right, and, and sometimes you, 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 you need to take that step. And, 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 I, and you know, I'm going to move into chapter one because this falls perfectly into chapter one, emotional, psychological incarceration. And listen to Yolanda, listening to you, Yolanda, um, I'm going to break down chapter one and I'm the listening audience, you, you should be able to correlate chapter one with your personal journey. So emotional, psychological incarceration. A lot of people will say, well, Dr. Clay, what is the um, emotional constipation? So I'm going to break it down into emotional, psychological incarceration is a non-diagnostic disorder. So people who are in the uh, mental health field understand a non-diagnostic disorder means that if you went into the medical diagnostic statistical manual and you're looking for a disorder, you might see bipolar, uh, the yada, 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 yada. When it's non-diagnostic, that means it won't be in the in the book. So I came up with this disorder to, to describe stages we go through. So in Yolanda's particular case, in most individuals' particular case, the first stage of emotional and psychological incarceration is emotional constipation. And that occurs from, the, from birth until the age of 14. And when you are exposed to a trauma from birth to the age of 14, you become emotionally constipated. Now, if you don't address the emotional and constipation <laughs> during that time period of constipation, your emotions go into an incarceration. And that usually occurs from, from the age of 14 into adulthood. Now, we're looking at it from a male's perspective. We're looking at it from the male perspective. We look at how many men are in prison, 1.7 million plus African-American men in prison. And 85%, I would say 90% of them probably went through a stage of emotional constipation, emotional incarceration. Yolanda, in your particular case, you stated I was going to church and I was praying, but my release didn't really come until I really opened up and released that emotional incarceration. And, and, I, and I give people this visual, you know, when, and, and this is a very cutting edge, innovative visual that I need you to see in your mind. When you sit on a toilet, the, your objective and the goal is to release. And when you release, you feel better. So when, you, when you've been exposed to a trauma and you hold that emotional waste inside of your body, it's eating you up. And that secret is making you sick. But just like when you release physical waste and you release emotional waste, it makes you feel better. So hopefully people listening to the audience today mm -hmm. can understand the visual Overstand and understand the visual that I just shared. And, 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 and I'm going to chime in, and it has no title. We've, we've lost two prominent individuals, worldly individuals, um, that took their own lives. And um, I'm, I mean, I'm quite sure people look at the news. I don't want to call any, any call none of their names out, but they're very high profile people, and they both committed suicide. Um, you, you feel me? And that's that's the seriousness of, of life in itself. Right, right. And, we, and, 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 and it's so funny because these people, they, right, they have all yeah. this money. Yeah. They famous. They famous, but they, they still have, suffering. They still suffering because the outside, the outside, they look absolutely perfect. Yes, ma'am. Share that with them because I went to work every day. Mm. I presented financial to executives. I did. I did what I was supposed to do. Amen. As far as representing myself, but that was all from the outside. It was never nothing from the inside. And now, um, three years ago, when I finally addressed all of my, quote unquote, my secrets, mm -hmm. it took me three months. I went away for three months. Actually, I went to Palm Springs, California. Okay. A wonderful, spiritual, um, holistic resort. Yes, ma'am. Three months. And came back. And, and believe it or not, I took FMLA. It was all paid for, used insurance. And people don't realize 
Your insurance can cover this stuff. That's right. Yes, definitely. It covers it. No, just like you go and get a mammogram or you get your checkup, your your teeth cleaning every six months, your insurance covers all of this. Yes. Yes. And it's available to you. And that's what I did. And and when I came back and I went around the same people that I worked with, you know what they, they the first thing I I heard and I heard it for weeks. You look different. It's something about you. <laughs> yeah, you look yeah. different. It's something about one. I was clean for three months at that point from substance abuse, and then I started to address, you know, those secrets. They, I wasn't constipated anymore, as you would say. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We miss a lot. Of, miss a lot. Of, I want to thank you for. We, we want to get to a couple more of our calls before um, we come to a conclusion. But um, well, thank you guys. I really appreciate the topic. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm definitely going to pick up the book. Outstanding. Excellent. Keep up the good work, Coach Archie. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. All right. We have another call on the line. Is Frazier? Is there Frazier on the line? Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you now. Yes, sir. Yeah, happy day. How you doing? I'm actually uh, connected with Dr. William uh, via Facebook. I'm actually watching your live. I just happened to catch your live. I'm in Scotland. I was connected via Desiree Lee, Authors of Business Nation. And I just thought it was important to say hello and introduce myself to say oh. who I am. Yes, sir. Uh, if that's all right, I do a podcast show in Scotland on a Christian radio station called oh. The Heart Song Live. Outstanding. In the Dr. UK in Scotland. And... The reason why I'm phoning is uh, because I want to make, well, as I say, I'm, I'm, my new podcast show name is called Ramsey Unleashed Going Beyond Borders, and I look for people, uh, interesting people from all backgrounds to interview and talk about their life, from whatever, whatever, whatever background they've come from, uh, to literally tell, to talk about it on my show. So I just thought I'd phone in to say, let's you know, connect, I'm happy to help out, connect with me. Uh, I'd love to be able to interview you if you're interested. To get your platform over in the UK and Scotland. Outstanding. So what I'll do is I'll have I'll have my uh, my engineer Nikki. I'll make sure that she gets your number. And what I'll do is when, when we when we break from the um, the show, sir, I'll definitely give you a call. Yeah. Well, what it is is uh, almost midnight here in Scotland in Edinburgh. So uh, I'll be on my bed. But if you can get me on Facebook. You can connect connect with me. I'm connected with Doctor William Flipley. And uh, okay. you can have a chat any time. So I was connected via uh, a friend of his uh, authors and business. Outstanding. And if you, if you, so, uh, so for me, sir, if you can, can you um, inbox Doctor 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 Wim um, in his inbox and have your information? That way we can go directly to it and we can reach out to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd Outstanding. Be great. It's all about interacting and networking and bringing platforms across the world. Outstanding. That's what I like to do. Thank so you for happy days. You know. Outstanding. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for, for calling, calling in. in. All right, buddy. Take care. All right, Doctor Flip. We we got them calling in from Scotland. Scotland. Okay. I, I'm sure some constipated people in Scotland. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> we gonna um that 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 and 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 you know that's Doctor Flip, my man. We laugh and, jo- and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you my secret. And I know Doctor Flip is the same. But we laugh and joke sometimes because we love the the fact that we are helping. Thousands and thousands of people, man, and we we enjoy doing it. And people don't know, and I speak about this often. If you help, if you just live your life to help, you're gonna receive so many blessings. Yes, Some yes. of these blessings you're not even gonna realize that they're they, blessings, they but, come, right. but you're covered. They, and I I live to be covered. Yeah. I mean, every day you wake up <laughs> with, with your right mind, with your ears and your, on, your toes and your feet, and you can get up and walk. I mean, because, you know, you reap what you sow. Hey, Slim, I don't want to get emotional. Stop. You you, you jotted some information because you was about to hit on this. What what, what exactly is emotional constipation? Yeah, I just talked about you it. You talked about when it? When I wrote down emotional, psychological, and constipation, Man, the, the, so, three, the three stages. That's chapter okay. one. It gives you a, a basis, a foundation to start from when you're reading the rest of the book because we're going to revert back to chapter one throughout Man, the whole book. Y'all need to get this guy's book. I'm going to have Dr. Flip all, all throughout um, Archie's pages because... He's a powerful young man. He's doing great things. And he has this knack or this way to actually cultivate and to have people put it like this. He the, the things that you write, Doc, it makes sense. And you keep people interested in your flow, in your writing, 
where a lot of people are not doing that in their publications. And I want to commend you for the way you go about doing your business. Well, and, 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 and <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I'm, Real and that's, I appreciate it. I, Real I really talk, appreciate man. what you're saying. Um, I try to, you know, keep it innovative, creative, but at the same time, I want to give people something when they read, when they read and they walk away like, wow. I can really, you, I, I can relate to this because, again, my story. When you read, when you when you start reading this book, you're going to be able to find something in the book that relate to you or someone you know that you're like, wow, this is the individual. Mm -hmm. This is about me. This is about somebody I know. I, I want to, I want, and we we spoke about this before the show started. I want you, I want Doctor Flip guys, my listeners, give me your testimony on how you became or how you become you. On this current walk, what what and 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 and, and, and these type of questions become repetitions, for real. And you probably saying though, but that people need to hear it. From no, no. I, I, so okay. So how did I get to this point? Um, and I talk about this in the book, so I won't. I will share tips, tip, tidbits of it. Mm -hmm. um, I got to this point from my mother was diagnosed with carposis skin cancer at, when I was nine years of age. Okay. She died when I was 13 years of age. I recall answering the phone when the doctor stated, um, the doctor stated, Miss Marsh has, Miss Annie McClay has expired. Um, from that standpoint, I moved on to living with my grandmother. Father was not around, he wasn't present. Um, and when I was 10 years, I'll never forget when I was 10 years of age and I was sitting at the kitchen table my mother was sitting across from me and she said promise me two things and, and she said um, make sure you make something of yourself and never treat a woman like your father treated me Wow. and I was 10 years of age and so I always revert back to that particular at that time when I didn't understand but now I understand so my childhood experience, and then professionally, after going through all of that, I decided, you know what, I want to help other people. So, and then my, that's why I decided to be a counselor. Okay. So, from that, this is, this is, the, the base, the, I just gave you a breakdown. So, we got four minutes remaining on the whole show. Yeah, man. Four that's minutes? I'm trying to tell so you. So, I need to talk about July the 7th. <laughs> Go ahead. So, July the 7th, we have our actual, my, um, the official launch of the Constipated Man Tour. Archie's going to be co-hosting. Hosting. Yes, sir. Archie's going to host. Yes, sir. Um, we have another guest going to be talking about suicide. It's going to happen at 1450 Mercantile Lane um, in Largo, Maryland uh, from 6 to 10 p.m. You can find, you can get the tickets on Eventbrite, um, eventbrite.com. Just type in the diary of emotionally constipated man. And just let me, let me just share this. I'm going to share this with you. You don't want to miss what's going to happen. I mean, we're going all over the country, um, Atlanta. D.C., Jacksonville, New Orleans, Baltimore. I'll be at the Rattleston Library in Baltimore. Um, calls are coming in. People are calling in. Um, I just got a call, email last week from a um, very um, um, innovative uh, an individual has a, a very has a talk a talk show, and he wants me to come on the show once the book is released. But I won't release that until we you know solidify everything. So the ball is rolling. July the seventh. I want to see you in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. For my official launch of the Constipated Man Tour, Archie's going to be hosting. Um, it's going to be cutting edge. You know, it's going to be cutting edge, innovative, creative. We're going to have free resources because there's some people, a lot of people are hurting. Um, I'm going to talk more depth about the book. Um, feel free to re reach out to me on boysoffthehook.com. If you go to boysoffthehook.com, you're able to connect with me on all my social media outlets. Um, if you want me to come out to your church, uh, youth center, detention center, come out and speak to the youth, come out and speak to the adults, feel free to reach out to me on boysoffthehook.com. Um, right. That's the website. Uh, to reach out to me. Let's, let's, let's talk. Let's have this conversation. Let's get this, this, this ball rolling. Let's start the conversation to emotional healing, to the emotional well-being of all individuals, regardless of their race, color, or creed. And um, we have a minute left. So the next person that call in, we're going to give them a free ticket and a, a free pass to the event on July the 7th. Yep. And um, if we off air, we, we, we'll get that to you. But in, but in closing, I want to say this because people don't do it enough, man. I want to thank you for your walk. I want to thank you for your purpose. 
I want to thank your mom for you, man. And and I speak about it all the time. Our moms are our moms. And I can't even, I have yet to come up with a word to best describe how a mom, the important role that a mom play. But I want everybody to check all these young men and all these young ladies that disrespect any mom or grandma figure. Right. You are doing a disservice to yourself, that individual, that mom, this country, to allow our kids, our youth, to disrespect anybody's mother. Correct, correct. And I'm going to close with that. And my mom know I love her more than life. Matter of fact, I love all your moms out here. Um, and I love the dads, too. I, I, I love everybody for the, for the most part. But I, I do want to say this. We have to start doing right by the people that are directly in front of us first before we stop or start always trying to save everybody outside of our families. Mm. And I'm saying mm. it. You got people that's directly in front of you. You you leave your house having a conversation with somebody that's just an unfinished conversation. Right. But correct. yet you're going to leave your house and go outside and save somebody else. Mm. You got to take your home first. Come on, man. So once again, home. man, thank you guys. Well, thank you for everyone listening so on much. Facebook Live. Shamika, sorry we couldn't get to your question. Corey. All the people who are chiming in. Tina, thanks for chiming in on Facebook Live. Thank you for everyone who's chiming in tonight. We're, we're starting the conversation. We're on the road right. to healing. Lives will be changed forever. Thank you. All right, once again, the Archie Beslow Radio Show. Let's figure it out. WL 95.9 FM, 1450 AM, and WODCnews.com. Information is power. Thank you guys so much for tuning in each and every Sunday. Tell a family member, tell a friend. Each and every Sunday, we all should listen in. Thank you so much. Hold every breath, kiss on my chest. I ain't that strong. I'm in your life, life, life now. <laughs>